Good morning, folks. We're aiming to get episode 11 of Earth Catastrophe Cycle out for you tonight, Solar Micronova 3. But first, let's go around the update starting at spaceweathernews.com and finding the last day on our star provided no solar flares or CMEs, the large coronal hole, dead center longitudes, crossing Earth-facing position. We magnetically connected to it last night through interplanetary magnetic fields. And while the plasma stream from the coronal hole is still two to three days away from Earth, the earthquake alert kicked in last night, and a low-velocity zone blood echo was followed by a 6.7 at the asthenosphere ceiling, striking one of the red alerts we had posted to watch. It is notable, earthquake forecasting at quakewatch.net does still have the blood echo wind map up, but is without the OLR maps from the government. One of three key items we use to predict quakes won't be back until the shutdown ends. Let's go to the top weather event of the last day. Twisters ripped through parts of Alabama and Mississippi, causing a considerable amount of damage in their path. Now, while the tornado threat is lessened this evening, the same low that drove the tornadoes is the same storm system supposed to crush the north with snow. Chicago feels like Chicago again, and it's tracking eastward towards New England. By the way, no need for blood echoes when the atmosphere looks like this over Madagascar. One of those upticks in seismicity or volcanoes is due here or on the faults extending just east into the sea and west into Africa. Want to quickly remind those in the viewing zone for tonight's eclipse, many of us watching from the Americas, it's actually going to happen tonight. UTC day starts just after dinner time in the eastern U.S., so as nightfall lingers on, try to catch the moon going dark. China has launched that satellite that can create meteor showers on demand. It's one of a few amazing things they have planned for show in the coming years. Interesting article up next on Saturn. Cassini's data has allowed for a new declaration of the length of day on the Saturnian planet, and for a while it will stand as the official, but please recall that Saturnian rotation was thought to be changing, and this could just be the latest data point in that line. Wanted to drop this paper in the mix here, just to remind everyone that after the AGU's Pre-Earthquake Processes book in 2018, which was mostly about electromagnetism, the studies are now shifting to cross-correlations and attempts at live prediction. It is a bit of a struggle so far, but only in how different ionosons pick up the signal before the earthquake very differently. Given the pole shift focus of the latest cycle series and the idea that the government shutdown is hurting our community's ability to forecast earthquakes, except yesterday's apparently, it's worth noting that it's affecting magneticreversal.org as well, at the first link on that page list, going to the official pole positions and field declination, also out of service due to the government shutdown. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org, your fly-on-the-wall podcast yesterday was heavily focused after the first 10 minutes of news rundown, star-planet interactions, and the catastrophe cycle discussion, which leads nicely into part 11, again, hopefully coming up tonight here on YouTube. We've got your wind maps, followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.